What's up everyone? Shane here with ROA Off-Road. Welcome to a, another Thursday campfire rant. Today, I actually want to read a comment from one of our last rants and I don't know, answer the question or comment on the comment, I suppose you could say. And, and I really appreciate this is because we do read the comments, just so you know, and we appreciate the comments, you know, and we read them and we listen. And if you want to know something, if you want us to do a campfire rant, make a comment and we'll get to it, right? But this is actually from uh, Ezekiel and he commented on my last rant that just came out at, a little bit ago was on the value of camping. And he actually says, "Let's." I'm just gonna read it really quick and then we'll talk about it. It says, do you see a potential for the actual quality overland campers made in the US being anywhere in the price range of what the majority of US citizens can afford anytime? He says, asked with zero negativity, just an honest question. I really enjoy your videos, the videos you create and the standard set. There's just no middle ground for US products. It's either garbage or something the majority of outdoor loving Americans can never afford. I completely understand certain materials costing more that are uh, relevant like the materials on the Explorer's exterior. However, perhaps cabinets can still be quality but more affordable materials. I, I, I really appreciate this comment. I just want to say Ezekiel. The new challenge is to partner with someone to create an affordable yet still quality rugged camper. Make one called the Frankenstein using access material, potential waste from luxury builds for cabinets, etc. I don't mind if mine's mismatched. Ha ha ha, right? Uh, anyways, uh, could you do a video where you show the things and quality high-end campers that realistically could be swapped out for still affordable materials, but perhaps not, not so whatever, where, sorry, I'm cutting off. Anyways, he just says the US needs to represent the, the world market for campers, specifically off-road for sure, but we need to um, rep for the average American as much as the rich ones. No hate towards the ones that can afford it. I think this is important. It's just like, don't be, don't be jealous and, and envious and hateful. And I, and I like this guy's comment. And he says, curious on your thought. There's a market for them and there has to be a way to do it, is what he says. And then he just said, love what you do. He's also an outdoor professional science educator and he finds inspiration watching our videos. So thank you so much for making this comment. You did actually close out with like watching the videos like you all create and love that you're inspiring others to connect to earth and adventure. Thank you Ezekiel for that comment. I think it's a really good comment. He says there has to be a way to make this happen. And I agree. And, and, and I don't know what the med medium income is in America. It is probably around 50,000 or so, somewhere around that range. So the reality is an explore or a pause or even a conquer, you know, the UEV 19 that I'm sitting in front of. Anything that's gonna be over $100,000 really is getting out of the price range for the average American. Yeah, even $50,000 is pushing it. If, if you're a single household that makes 50 grand, you probably shouldn't be buying a $50,000 trailer even. Now, I do want to make a few comments as far as quality trailers out in the marketplace. Yes, you're right. Like the Explorers or the Pauses, those are kind of, those are a higher price range. Whenever you get over a hundred grand, that's pretty, it's, it's up there, right? It doesn't mean that there are not trailers that aren't built with really, really good quality that are less than a hundred grand that you can still buy. For example, Patriot campers, those are closer to 50 or 60 grand and they're incredible trailers. There's a lot of trailers out in the marketplace that we carry and that we don't carry that are phenomenal products, right? That are in that range of 30, 40, 50, 60 grand that are really good quality. Now they're, they're smaller. Like obviously there's a, they're, like their teardrop styles or tent styles, but they're still really good quality. So not like that, that that's something you got to realize is there are afford, more affordable options below $50,000 that are great quality trailers. Ember, Ember is, is a, a good example of a trailer that does some good things and is not super expensive. Some people kind of compare and say, oh, you know, Ambers are half the price of your trailers and they're just as good. Not true, absolutely not true. Are they good? Yes. Are they better than most? Yes. The independent suspension is cool. They've done some, they've done some cool tweaks and little modifications and that's good. It is good. It is good trailer overall, right? It's gonna be better than a $20,000, $30,000, you know, ultra light 
I call that ultra junk. Anything that says light in it usually means junk in the RV industry anyway. There are light things that like, if NASA makes it light, it's probably good because it's good materials and they're just light. Aluminum is light, right? But usually in the United States, ultra light means ultra junk. So there are things out there that are more affordable, but yes, you are right. There is a huge, huge gap right now of superb quality and affordability it, because obviously we look at cars and and like you can buy a twenty thousand dollar car and expect a hundred plus thousand miles out of that vehicle you can go and buy a hundred thousand dollar car and expect the same thing right hundred thousand miles that's that's pretty common in the car industry right the quality across the board is pretty good in cars nowadays now let me tell you something that i'm really excited about because the smaller manufacturers that we work with, quite frankly, I expect the quality to be superb. When you're dealing with a manufacturer that only builds a couple hundred or a few hundred trailers a year, I expect high touch and I expect good quality. Imperial Outdoors, Dwellers, Conquerors, like I expect to have some good quality coming from these trailers. You know, these little mom and pop shops that aren't these massive corporations in the RV industry, you should expect high quality because you're paying high dollar and it's very custom, it's very small, it's very niche. I expect good quality out of this. Now, the issue is RV manufacturer as a whole. The RV manufacturer roughly built 600,000 trailers last year, equating to about $20 billion in sales. And the Overland niche is not even a a, a percentage of that. The trailers that we sell are such a small, small, small percentage as far as it goes up when you, when you say $20 billion, right? So one of the things that's going to have to happen for more affordable, better quality trailers to come into the market is number one, people have to stop buying them, right? They have to refuse to buy them. Now, let me tell you something that is pretty exciting that's happening. And this this is one of the reasons why I'm more excited about this manufacturer than most of our manufacturers right now at this time. And it is the, the new Paws by Palomino. Now Paws is owned by Forest River, which is owned by Berkshire Hathaway or Warren Buffett, right? This is a huge, huge deal. The fact that Palomino is stepping into this market and they're willing to build a high-end, good quality trailer means something. And I think this is going to create a, an effect that's over the next few years where the entire industry starts getting better, even the cheap stuff. And so let me explain this to you. If you remember, you know, in the 90s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, Ford and Chevy and Chrysler, honestly, they weren't putting out their best work in since their conception, right? If anything, they were probably putting out some of their worst work. And I don't know if you work in that industry, I'm sorry. I used to sell cars and I just, when I would go to auctions to buy vehicles in the early 2000s, honestly, I was mostly looking for Toyotas and Hondas because they were just so unbelievably reliable. You know, I would get a Ford Taurus and Man, transmission problems, engine knocking problems. I would get Chevy Aveos. I was like, I, I was like, that's just a throwaway car. Once it gets certain a certain amount of miles, you just throw it in the trash. It's crazy, right? But then I would get in these Civics that had 100, 200, 300,000 miles on them, and they were they were superb. They were phenomenal vehicles, right? What happened is when Toyota and Honda first came into the United States. It was like, well, whatever. Ford and Chevy and Chrysler, they were just doing their thing. They didn't even care because they were small. But as they started growing, right, as they started taking market share from them, it made them step up, right? It made them realize, wow, if we don't actually step up, Honda and Toyota are gonna end up taking over the entire American market. Now, here we are, fast forward 20 or so years later, I don't believe that Toyota and Hondas are that much better than Ford and Chevy nowadays, probably on the same playing field. I mean, and this isn't my opinion. Go out and read JD Power, go read at Consumer Reports. Like reliability, uh, Ram is phenomenal now. I, I, all of the car manufacturers have stepped up their game 
and now they're making very, very, very good products across the board. I, I don't believe that the days of Honda and Toyota being so much more superior than Ford and Chevy of the 90s or 2000s, early 2000s, it's just not not there anymore. That's not true. And if you say, if you believe that, it's just because you're really biased or you're still living in the 2000s, early 2000s. Because nowadays you can go get a good vehicle from any manufacturer. I mean, come on, Kia? It's crazy. Like when I was selling cars, Kia was, they were, <laughs> frankly, I thought they were trash. I wouldn't touch a Kia. Um, you would, I, I would get in Kias that had 30 or 40,000 miles with bad transmissions. Nowadays, Kias are amazing. It, it blows my mind, but it's because the standard has been raised. The bar was raised, and I believe that was with Honda and Toyota. And when they raised the bar, what, what, but what has to happen to raise the bar is you have to make an impact in the market. It can't be a small little one, one off, you know, we make 12 trailers a year, like nobody cares. But since Forest River, now let me tell you the numbers on Forest River roughly. Last year, out of the $20 billion of product that was made, Forest River made five, I think it's five billion. So they own a quarter of the market. And the fact that they're stepping into this market and saying, hey, we're gonna start building good trailers. That's a huge deal for everyone. Unfortunately, it's scary for the small mom and pop shops that they're gonna have to step up their game even higher because if Paws or Palomino starts pushing the market, I think over the next few years, we're gonna see all of the big manufacturers stepping into the market and, and hopefully the marketplace will start using their checkbooks to buy better quality stuff. And hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to see more affordable quality stuff in a cheaper price range. I think that's going to happen. I really do. But it's probably more because the big manufacturers are stepping into the game because they're realizing, hey, people want quality. I, I think that's a trend that's happening. And yes, we're going to see more affordable quality trailers, I believe, in the future. And it's not, I don't just believe it into the future. I've already seen it over the last couple of years. The fact that Ember is now a thing, like didn't even exist. I don't think they're great quality compared to our trailers, but also they're a half the price or even less, right? But they are way better quality than the standard stuff that has been being made for the last 50 years in Indiana. They are better quality. And, and so I think that's gonna happen across the board. We're gonna start seeing better and better quality. And I think it's gonna be in more and more affordable stuff, but it has to become a matter of, the marketplace has to refuse to buy cheap stuff and they have to, they have to demand the higher quality products in the marketplace. And I, I think we, we have a lot of people to thank, right? I believe ROA, we've been pushing this. And I think Imperial Outdoors has done a phenomenal job in stepping up their game. And I think the imports that have been coming from Australia and China, I think that's a huge deal because it's crazy that China is making better quality trailers than Indiana. It's, it's honestly, it's insulting to the people in Indiana. And they've told me that. They've said, this is shameful right like we feel insulted and we're not okay with it and they've said we, we're stepping up our game and we're not gonna let imports coming into the u.s take over our market and so i think this is a, a great thing that's happening across the board and over the next few years you're going to see better built trailers for more affordable prices and i'm excited for that time because I want everybody to go out and camp. I want every single person to be able to go out and enjoy nature and camp and disconnect from the crazy mayhem of the world and, and just sit around a campfire with your family and talk. Not be on your devices, not be sucked into whatever your Netflix TV shows are, but actually socialize and build deeper relationships with the people you love. And I'm really excited for that. So thank you, Ezekiel, for the comment. And if anybody else has any comments, make them now. And if you want us to, if, if there's something that you want us to hit, a topic, I'd love to try to hit that and hopefully uh, educate you and help you learn a little bit more about our industry and the future and the direction that we're headed. Thank you so much for watching. Remember every Thursday, subscribe if you like this. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. Go watch something else. <laughs> Have a wonderful day and talk to you later. Bye-bye.